uh, the monastery was uh, founded by Colum Kill uh, towards, probably towards the end of the 6th century. It was granted to Colum Kill by Amot Brainon, uh, King of Tefia. The major surviving monument at Doro is the Doro High Cross. It's um, about 12 feet high and it's very much like the Cross of Monaster Boyce or the Cross of the Scriptures at Clonmacnoise. In the year 1990, we started a campaign to have the, a, a right of public access to Duro and to see the cleaning up and restoration generally of the historical site. And that did work out very well in that in 2003, four, the High Cross was moved inside for its better securing from weathering and the church was uh, completely restored. Probably the greatest treasure uh, from the Monastery of Doro is the world famous Book of Doro. It was written uh, towards the end of the 7th century and it is a hundred years older than the Book of Kells. The pattern of Doro takes place on the 9th of June of each year, which is the commemoration date of the death of St. Colin Kill. This pattern has been going on in Doro for hundreds of years. And at this stage, I would like to compliment the various pattern committees who over the centuries have kept this tradition going. And that includes the Curtain Committee, who even in this curtain year, put on a version of uh, a pattern. Over the years, um, they faced adversity as well, because back through the centuries, such things as loads of clay and stones on the avenue to stop them traveling down, gates being locked. But somehow or other on pattern day, St. Colin Kill always seemed to clear the way. The community of Doro rallied round again for the gathering in, in, in 2013, in which once again St. Colin Kill was, was, was celebrated, uh, um, because um, I think St. Colin Kill drew the families home for that, and we had hundreds of people celebrating that event. And even this year, to pay tribute to the, the community once again and, and the Pattern Committee, we did have a celebration on, on Pattern Day this year on the 9th of June, despite the COVID. And uh, I think one thing that needs to be highlighted is on that day that we have the privilege in Doro of having two centenarians, both of whom were born within a mile of each other, went to school together, married within a mile of each other, and both of them are, are heading now for 101 years of age, and they planted an oak tree in commemoration of the 1500th anniversary of the birth of St. Colin Kill. This is a facsimile copy of the Book of Doro. It was purchased by Dr. Moran uh, and to be used as a treasure for the parish and to be used in connection with the pattern and the celebration of the Feast of Colum Kill. F to celebrate the Colum Kill 1500, two banners have been commissioned by the parish and they hang in the church in Doro. One of the pages from the Book of Doro is featured in that. And that's our living link, our living connection with Colum Kill and his books. And indeed, the children at the Doro School this year um, did many projects to commemorate the 15th centenary of Colum Kill. It would normally be their first communion day, that didn't happen this year, but they had a full pattern day in school. We're standing here in the bookshop of the Offaly History Centre at Bury Quay. But besides selling books, we also have an extensive library of about 12,500 volumes, 12,500 titles, and some of these relate to Doro and to the life of Colum Kill. In fact, the published literature on Colum Kill that is better known goes back to the mid-19th century when we had the Bishop Reeves edition of The Life by Adam Nunn, and we have a copy of that here in our collection 
and then we go on to the 1960s to the Anderson Life and more recently to the Penguin edition by the late Richard Sharp. These are all the main sources for the life of Colm Kill. And in addition to that then we have the studies of the Duro historical site, the monastic site. And that is really best known since the 1890s, since the 1300th anniversary of the death of Colm Kill. Because in 1896 the Royal Society of Antiquaries came to this area and as a preliminary to that they had um, a published guide to the site and in 1897 the local rector in Duro, uh, Williams, uh, published an article on the old graveyards in Duro Parish. And in many ways that is still a very useful article uh, for the history of Duro and we reprinted that in a publication on Duro issued by the Society in the 1990s. Now our ambition would be that at some stage very soon we would see a collection of essays by specialists on the life of Colm Kill and his associations with Duro. In the meantime we are very glad to facilitate the public who wish to know more about Colm Kill, the different lives that have been done and the different studies to come here and read them safely uh, over the next few months. It's a wonderful time that we're marking the 1500th anniversary of uh, Colm Kill and not only do we need to have these lives available, we also need to see the context in which the life was written and in the period in which Colm Kill was born. We also have some hangings in the, uh, in the, in the church. Um, there are the reproduced pages and they're most unusual. They're not in pen and ink, they're in needle and thread. The lady who worked these, her name is Mary Elford and she's from Coventry and her family came from Durrow and from an area not far from place called Grantia, which was the old name of Doro. So there's very long uh, tentacles of memory back there. Uh, she did this particular one, this page here, it's folio 85. She produced it for the millennium. And she produced another one and presented it to us for the gathering. That was the, in 2013. And it was presented on Pattern Day. It took her three years to make it. She had to research the thread, the ink, and uh, she visited um, Trinity College and saw the Book of Doro a number of times. And I think of her doing that with the love and the dedication that the monks would have put into writing their books. And we're very proud in Doro to have those two hangings. And we're very proud to have this facsimile copy. And it's been used on many occasions, and uh, we've um, we commemorated um, the 14th centenary, and we carried it in procession. Uh, so it it is very very much alive. Mm -hmm.